Good morning, Northfield. My name is Savannah. Hey, uh, my name is Josh, and we're so glad that you're here this morning. Obviously, we're having a good time, and we hope that you're having a good time too. And so today, we've got a great service planned for you, and we're just glad that you chose to make us part of your Sunday, especially for those of you who are watching online. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And hey, it's a special Sunday live here on campus because today we are launching our new groups for this semester. And so we're so excited excited about that. You will notice that the lobby is completely different over on the green room side and that's because we are having group link up today. And so we hope that you will check that out if you've been looking for a way to connect even deeper, not only with God, but with other people right here in Northfield. That's a way to do it. I know, Savannah, you lead a small group, right? I do, yes. Yeah, and I, I lead one and I know, like, is it not just an awesome experience? Yeah, I think for me, actually, I mean, I just graduated college I uh, you know just started a full-time position and so you know in this age that I'm at is it's kind of hard to make connections with people just not being in college so I'm not around a ton of people my age and being in a small group has led me to a bunch of new friendships and actually girls who are gonna be in my wedding later this year and so that's what my small group has done for me and so joining a small group for you might look a little bit different but I promise you you won't regret doing it yeah and I mean that's my wife and I same story you know it can be all about the kids or it can be all about work sometimes and so just making intentional time to be with other people has just been so beneficial for us. And so if you're not in a group, we would encourage you to jump into one of those today. All right. Yeah, so another thing we have coming up is something that we've been talking about probably for three or four weeks now, but we're not gonna stop talking about it because we are so excited for Night to Shine. I even have a prop. Oh boy, she, she brought toys. I, I brought a prop. And we are so excited for Night to Shine. It is going to be on February 11th. We're doing a Night to Shine through. And we're going to even, we're figuring out a way that we can have a dance floor, Josh. Like, I know that you've been begging for a dance floor. So I have. I have. I'm going to bring you Oh my God. Yeah, I'm just saying. If you are wanting to volunteer for Night to Shine, you can still do so by going to the website under the events tab and just signing up today. It is such an amazing event. It is one of my favorites. It's quickly grown to be, I think, everybody's favorite event that we have once a year. So, again, you can go and register to sign up and um, volunteer for that today. Yeah, honestly, like my first year on staff here, we had it live, and I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. But even this past year, when we did a shine through the drive through experience, it was still very special. It's an enriching experience even for you guys and so we hope that you'll volunteer for that and the last thing we have for you today guys is actually our short-term studies if you're looking for a way to grow deeper in your faith during this um, spring semester we would love for you guys to jump into one of those you can find more information about those on the website but you can also go out to the I'm in station and Ryan is gonna have some information about those out there we would love to plug you in but guys we're excited about this morning Morning. We're going to jump into worship here in just a few minutes, but right now we just want to wish you guys a happy Sunday and we hope you have a great day. Hey, well, good morning, church. It's great to see you guys here in the house, or if you're joining us from your house, I want to say thank you for making Northfield Church a part of your week. Our mission here at Northfield is simple. Our mission is to love God, to love people, and make Jesus known. That's why we exist as a church. That's why we gather together here on Sunday mornings, why we broadcast to you all over the county and the world. It's why we do food giveaways like we did yesterday. It is all to make that name of Jesus known right here in our community and at large. So I'm thankful that you guys tuned in and made us a part of your week. A couple of things for you this morning that are going to involve your smartphones. If you have a smart device, we'll ask, go ahead and get that out, get it out of your pocket. Or if you've been texting already and all, like you just look prepared, you look like you knew this was coming. But one of the things that we would love for you to do is to check in on social media, either by Facebook or Instagram. Each month we partner with a new organization. So this month we partner with Souls for Souls, who's actually doing something creative in helping provide winter coats for people in need. And so if you leverage your social media account for a little bit of good today, all you have to do is check in on Facebook. Facebook or Instagram, and you can help solve some of this winter weather that people are experiencing by helping donate a warm coat to somebody in need. So at any point today, feel free to check in and do some good. Also, while you've got your phone out there, I want to call attention to what we call our digital connection card. Many of you have been around for a while, and so you've heard us talk about this digital connection card, but if you're new with us or you're tuning in online maybe for the first time or you're looking for the first time to maybe take another step in your faith or a step to get plugged in, that digital connection card is going to be the place for you to go. That's kind of the on-ramp 
for anything and everything that we talk about. So if you're looking for a group, if you're looking to place membership, if you're looking to just know what is my next step in faith that Northfield can partner with me in taking, well, that digital connection card is going to be the place to go. And so in front of you, if you're here in the house, you'll see there's a little QR code in front of you. Just open your camera, scan it. Those of you watching online, you saw it just a second ago right down there, or you can download our app or go to our website and find that connection card to get plugged in here at Northfield. Now, today is going to be an exciting day. Today's going to be a special day that we are really celebrating a new ministry that launched here at Northfield just in the coming months or in the re- last recent months, and that is Celebrate Recovery. And so you'll see this team up here. This is our Celebrate Recovery band that, that worships every Thursday night right here in this building to help it keep that, that uh, ministry of Celebrate Recovery going each and every week. And so you're going to be able to hear from them through way of worship, through communion. Communion is going to look a little bit differently than we normally do. It's going to be video driven. So I hope you got one of those little communion cups on your way in. But let me tell you, if you are not on your feet at this point, you're going to want to get on your feet and you're probably going to be dancing around. I know Preston's going to lead the way up here up front. Those of you tuning in online, you may want to stand up in your living room and jump around, maybe in a coffee shop if you're watching later in this week. But this crew is going to lead us in worship today. So you guys get on your feet and let's praise God in this house today. Man, it's good to be with you guys today. I don't know about you, but I'm excited that each of us this morning has a story that's been rewritten by grace. So this morning, we're going to sing about that. I want you to lift your voices and let's sing out together. Sing it out with me. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on, I believe. Believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Yes, I do. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. Come on, this is my testimony. This is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my Come together. Come together, sons and daughters. Come on, let's sing. Not with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. It's true. Yes, our God will finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony. From dead to life, this place we wrote my story. I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Come on, this next part is so true. And if we're not dead, he's not done. I don't know how many of you believe that this morning. But we're going to sing it together. Come on. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Come on, sing it. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. And greater things. testimony sing from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story i testify by jesus christ the righteous i'm justified this is my testimony
about this next part of service. We've been talking for a few months now about Celebrate Recovery and exactly what that means to each of us in our lives and what it's doing in the community. So we thought it would be a perfect time for Pastor Tom to sit down with several of our leaders and get to know what Celebrate Recovery has done for them. And hopefully you'll enjoy it. 
Hey, you know, uh, one of the things that I've been most excited about in 2021, out of all the things that we did as a church family, was the launch of Celebrate Recovery. And each of you were a part of that. And I just see every week the fingers it has and how it's reached people in our church family and our community. And I've enjoyed hearing your stories and what it's meant to you. And I thought it would be great for just our entire church family to hear from you what it's meant. And I know, Wendy, you and Josh were instrumental really in launching this whole thing and getting it going. What has Celebrate Recovery at Northfield meant to you over the past year? I don't even know that I could put that into words. Uh, it has been more of a journey than I ever would have imagined. It started with um, a, a group of people that just like followed blindly it felt like and yet they were so strong I mean these women were incredible and as we journeyed through a step study together we didn't just like become friends we became sisters and um, then fast forward we launched Celebrate Recovery and my mind has been blown at the response, not just from the church, but also from the community. And the people that have come and have been inspired by what's going on here has just blown my mind. And then, <laughs> fast forward just a few more weeks after that, and my house gets destroyed by the tornado. And um, I don't even know. A group of people came and loved on me like, whew, I've never been loved on before. I'm a hard person to love. <laughs> and um, you guys did it. And as I've journeyed, um, not only has recovery transformed me and my own struggles with codependency and food issues, but it has created this, uh, this healing for me that I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, I'd love to tell you that the peace that I have is just constant, but it's not in the middle of all this. It's, it's up and it's down. But what is constant is, is God and His body and His people, and they've loved me. Um, even when it's hard to love me. So, um, that's been my journey just here at Northfield, mm -hmm. and that's been pretty incredible. Um, I know other people have had different journeys. Uh, Kip, what, what's, how has your journey been different in Celebrate Recovery than in other, air, other times of your life? Well, uh, you know, when I got into uh, recovery originally, uh, I wasn't aware of. I don't even know if, if Celebrate Recovery existed at that time. Uh, but I spent several years in a, in a secular recovery type program um, and was so excited when we began Celebrate Recovery here because the uh, while the, the steps are very similar uh, between the secular recovery and, and Celebrate Recovery, uh, the missing element from from secular recovery was was God, and uh, the only the only way through complete recovery for me was including God in it. And there's uh, just no way that a self-created so-called higher power can substitute for what God can do because recovery doesn't exist without God. And uh, when, when Celebrate Recovery too, uh, I got to know people. I, I developed a, a whole new group of friends uh, that I didn't have before. Uh, just people that I had seen around church but now are really, really good friends that, that share this journey with me and share the growth, uh, the spiritual growth with God in this, in this program. And uh, I'm so grateful because in, in other types of recovery, it's like meeting with a bunch of strangers. Mm -hmm. But with Celebrate Recovery, it's, it's like going with your friends and 
and there's a comfort and as Wendy mentioned a, a peace that, that comes with sharing sharing your experiences and uh, uh, using that to help others and let others help you because the recovery is is not a straight line it's it's an up and down thing and we all go through different different experiences through recovery and uh, with this group uh, it's just been a, a wonderful journey uh, one, of the, one of those people Tammy has just become such a great friend and uh, I'd love to hear from her well so my journey was a little bit different um, uh, I like to say that you know, I saw Josh and Wendy talking about Celebrate Recovery and how it's not just for people who have had some sort of chemical dependency it's really been for all kinds of struggles, any kind of life issues, and if you've had a hurt habit or hang up. Hurt habit or hang up. And I just kept saying, hurt habit or hang up, I have some of those. <laughs> and um, maybe I should get those looked at. And so what I like to tell Wendy is that I just kept coming back and I wasn't committed at all the first few weeks. I just I, I kept, kept coming back and it felt good to share, you know, my experiences, to listen to other people. And I thought, you know, I can really help people too. But um, again, I was one of the people, we laugh about it now, but anytime we hear somebody say, you know, I came into this thinking that I was going to help other people and I didn't realize how much help I needed. It's everybody. Everybody runs into that. And so, um, and experiences that at CR. And so, you know, I just want to say CR is for everybody. For me, it's been life altering. It has really just freed me from a lot of fear. You know, there's that song, Fear is a Liar, and and, it, and that's always been a good song for me because I've been afraid of not being good enough or not being, um, you know, perfect and um, letting people down. And so, um, and I don't have to be that all the time anymore. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to be afraid because I have a God who loves me. And so, um, and I understand how he loves me. And, and the way we got to that is through lots of self-examination. And it's hard work, but if you do it, man, it is really transformational. So, um Wow. Dan has some great stories as well. He is, uh, you know, he's actually been in ministry before and um, and uh, has helped a lot of people through their recovery. So, Dan, you want to tell us about about yours? Yeah. So, I, I'm the the church kid that's always grown up darkening a pew and um, always grew up in in walls under a steeple. Um, and I ministered for a long time and pastored for a long time before we moved to Tennessee. Um, I can't remember not being involved in church. <clears throat> and as I kind of thought about this, I thought about, you know, all the stories of times that I've forgiven others and been forgiven and dealt with my, my hurts and habits and hang-ups long before I even heard about this this term, Celebrate Recovery, before. And uh, when I, I was approached by Josh and, and Wendy throughout all of it, I I thought, man, I can't wait to go help some other people. It's going to be great to go help other people. Like, I love being engaged. And, uh, man, we started through step studies, and all of a sudden it was just an amazing process, as, as we've all kind of talked about, of watching God do uh, work again in our lives. And, and for me in particular, I never realized how much I truly needed to continue the process of recovery myself. There were so many times I had started down a path of trying to fix myself with a good book or, or studying this or just kind of band-aiding it for the moment. Celebrate Recovery created that process for me truly to deal with some old habits and old hurts and pains that I had, you know, kind of progressed as, to the best of my ability. Um, and to the point where I began to trust again. I began to make new friends again and love people again. Um, so much of my life had been helping other people, as you know, pastors know. I, I had helped people and helped people and realized that I was the person needing help in, in this. And uh, those, those beginning weeks were, were amazing but painful, but it was beautiful to watch God do work. And one of the things that I've loved throughout all of it and what I've struggled with the most has been trust. It's, it's been hard for me to be around people. Um, I've, I've been, <laughs> as many people, you know, stabbed in the back and, and talked about behind the scenes. So 
I was concerned what this would look like. Um, word we use all the time in, in Celebrate Recovery is, is a safe place or safety. And to me, it meant, um, meant more than I can ever imagine. To be able, as a guy, because I think, um, I think everybody's a little concerned when they come in and start talking about where they fail, but guys in particular, I know we really struggle to, to be open and to be honest. But to come to an environment where I can be honest about my failures, past, present, and hopefully not future, but to be surrounded by guys and other family in a, in a safe environment where I know that they're going to help me through that process. And I love the word process too in all of this because what's so awesome, week by week by week, we celebrate the process. And it's not, it's not that we're all better or that you know everybody's healed right now, it's that there's this process going on in all of us. And I, and I love that fact of the gospel that we measure it some days in inches, some days in miles, but we celebrate all of it. And I'm just thankful for Northfield allowing us to have that, to build that ministry here, and honestly, just to create something beautiful and watch God do a work, do a work through it all. So mm -hmm. thank you, Tom, for that. Well, I, you know, I thank each of you for not only sharing your story around this table, but sharing your story uh, uh, via this medium with our entire church family today because there are so many others just like it. And uh, one of the things that I thought would be special for us to do, because uh, when, when I think about recovery, I think about the one thing that we were all in together, no matter who we were, whether we felt we needed something or didn't, we were in recovery for our sin. And uh, we celebrate that each week during communion. And I thought, what a special way for us around this table. And, uh, and I've asked Josh to not only lead us around this table, but our entire church family into uh, just taking communion together this morning. And uh, so Josh, would you do that for us? I would. I, you know, I've loved hearing each of your stories. And I think that you know, my story is similar to you guys. You know, I, I grew up in church and all that stuff, and I, I thought forever that I was the one helping people and until my life fell apart, right, and, um, and figured out that I needed that same help. And, you know, as I think on communion each week, it's, for me, it's a model. It, it, it is a very clear picture that Jesus has me in a different place than where I used to be. Like, because of his sacrifice and because of his body broken for me, because of his blood poured out for me, I don't have to be the same person I used to be anymore. And the thing I love about communion is it's a weekly reminder that change is possible, that real life change is possible. And so we're getting ready to sing a song, and we've sung it in Celebrate Recovery, and it's, it's absolutely one of my favorites. It's the song called Where I'm Standing Now, and we're getting ready to sing it, and we're getting ready to sing it with you as well. And we're going to teach it to you, and it, it is an amazing song. It talks about the, the chain-breaking, miracle-making, powerful name of Jesus. And that's what we stand on today. And that's what communion is all about. And so I'm going to ask you guys, can we take communion together? And we would love for you guys to take it with us as well. I know that many of you may not have grabbed these on the way in. We would love for you to grab one now. You can raise your hand and do so. Um, but as we take communion together, our table and you there, we just ask that you would just think on maybe where you used to be, who you used to be or maybe whether or not you're willing to let God change you now. But I do know this, is that He wants to. He loves you and He wants a relationship with you. And so today we're going to celebrate that. So let's peel back this top layer, guys. We're going to take the bread together, which is symbolic of, you know, His body, which was broken for us, so we can be whole. So we take that now in remembrance of Him. And as we peel back that next layer, we're going to find the juice there. It's just juice, but it's symbolic of His blood that was shed for all of us, for our sins, for your sins. And so today, we celebrate His sacrifice by taking the cup. This song is pretty special. Um, it's just become like an anthem and celebrate recovery. And it's a song that kind of makes me want to worship with just a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. You see, because the enemy tried to ruin my life. The enemy has tried to ruin yours, but today we don't have to stand in that anymore. We can stand on the chain breaking, the miracle making, the powerful name of Jesus Christ this morning. That's what communion is about. That's why we worship. And so today we would just want to ask that you would stand with us. We're going to teach you this song. 
I hope you guys will love it as much as we do, but it just talks about how he's changed our standing. Sing it with us, okay? I stand on the chain break, miracle making, powerful name of Jesus. On the body raised, prodigal saving, powerful name. I stand, I stand on the chain. Oh 
from the body raising, prodigal saving, powerful name of Jesus. Guys, can we lift up a shout to our Savior this morning? Come on, let's lift up our praise. Yes, God, we, we clap and we celebrate because we realize the truth of what we just declared. That hallelujah, we are free. And not because of anything that we could have done for ourselves, but because in the very places in which we thought couldn't be redeemed, in the very places that were filled with darkness, in the very places where we felt like we were enchained and captive by our own sin. God, you intervened. You stepped in, you made a way. And as we look and take inventory of where we are and we look down at the ground that we stand on, both physically but also spiritually, we realize we wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for you. And so, Father, that's why we gather together in worship. That's why as your church, we gather to celebrate and to proclaim what you have done and what you continue to do in and through each and every one of our lives. And so, Father, would you be the one that continues to lead and guide us through everything that we do. And may we never take for granted the place that we stand and how you have gotten us there. And together we proclaim this with one voice and we say, amen. Hey, well, you guys can have a seat if you're here in the house. If you're at your house, you can do what you want. Set it all the time because it's your house. So uh, I, I'm glad that you guys are here making us a part of your week. If you're with us normally or with us uh, just on a normal basis, this is the point where Tom, who's our senior pastor, normally gets up here. But Monday of this last week, he started to exhibit some symptoms, you know what I'm saying? And then had the little like the brain swab that, that confirms or denies one of the options. And so as you can see, he is not here. But thankfully, uh, he has been exhibiting some pretty mild symptoms uh, throughout this week and really started to turn the corner towards the end of the week. So he is home. He is resting. I'll wave to him because he's probably watching right now. Hey, Tom, everything's going really good. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, but but he, he's doing well, and, and we've just been fortunate just staff-wise that it's not hit us all kind of at the same time. It's been little by little to help us just really stay uh, just at that normal level that we're used to operating and being with you. And so thank you for being gracious. As you think of Tom this week, pray for him. Uh, barring anything like crazy unforeseen, he'll be back with us next week. We're actually kicking off a new series. You're getting a little bit of a prelude today, but then next week we're going to dive into a growth campaign for all of us that he will be here to lead us through. And so I'm glad that you guys are here for this week. I got a couple of announcements, some like just little housekeeping things just as we jump in and get going. The first is about the year-end giving statements. And so if you are, are in our system and we have your email and accurately, there's so many of you that give generously, you probably would have noticed that this week you got an email featuring your 2021 giving statement. If you did not get that, it might be due to a couple reasons. One, we may not have the correct email for you on file. We may have not even had any email for you on file. If we don't have an email, it's going to be mailed to you. So be watching your mailbox this week. But should you have any questions about your giving statement with you didn't get it, if you want to just confirm uh, your email, you can do that by going uh, to, you can go see Lisa Dotson. Hey, she's right there. She's right there in the back. You can wave to her. She'll be at the welcome desk, kind of post service. Or if like, that's a little bit of a rush, here's her email. It's lisa at northfieldchurch.net. You can get in touch with her. So any questions you may have on year in giving, she'll be able to answer for you, but be on the lookout for those. Thank you, Lisa, for taking care of that side of everything that we do. Now, before we jump into what we're doing, I'm excited because Night to Shine is just 19 days away. Yes, we are counting down because it's an exciting moment. It's one of my favorite events that we do each and every year. But instead of me telling you all about what Night to Shine is and what we're doing, I would rather just have Tim Tebow do that because it is the Tim Tebow Foundation that we partner with. And so, Tim, if you will, come on out here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, God, how many of you got it? Oh, I got a few of you. Like, he's here? No, he's not. But he is here via video. And so he uh, just wanted to thank us and our congregation for partnering with him. And so check this out. What's up, church congregation? This is Tim Tebow. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for saying yes to Night to Shine. You know, Night to Shine is a worldwide prom for people with special needs, and we're so grateful that we get to have it in all 50 states and countries around the world because 15% of the population has special needs. And we believe so many of those 15% don't know what it's like to be loved, don't know what it's like to be celebrated, don't know what it's like to have real worth and value, but we believe the God of this universe loves them like crazy. He sees them, and when He died on the cross, 
it counted for them as much as it did me or you. And so we want to celebrate that 15%. That's why at every night to shine, there's a red carpet. And at the end of all the celebrating and all the dancing, we crown every single one as the king or the queen of the prom, because we believe that's how the God of this universe sees them every single day. So thank you for helping us love those with special needs so well. We're so grateful for your church that said yes to all people, not just some people, because we believe the gospel is for all. Let's serve them all. God bless and thank you. You know, when we launched into Night to Shine, it was just under four years ago, right here in this room, we took out all the chairs and we realized, man, this place is big. We, we, we're going to have a, a pretty stellar party in here. And then Thomas Rhett like rocked the stage and then he got upstaged by one of our honored guests, Chase. He just came up here, took the mic and, and did like, I mean, he, he stole the show in the best of ways that it was really a moment that affirmed for us if you were there on that first year of you know, we didn't know a whole lot of what we were doing. It was just kind of following blindly into what God was leading us to. And, and man, it has been an incredible journey that now four years into doing this and partnering with this, we have discovered just an incredible partnership with people in our community and our friends and families with special needs that we have the privilege of serving through Night to Shine, but then through weekly programming like Gigi's Playhouse and just so many ways that, that you guys pour into that community. It's just an incredible way that Night to Shine is, just like Tim Tebow said, it is that opportunity that we have in a really large scale way to show a people group a love that they may not experience from the world around them. And so if you have not signed up to volunteer and to serve at Night to Shine, would you do so? Would you consider doing that? It is going to be a shine through just due to our circumstances and just being a vulnerable population health wise. But on that, we are going to surround our parking lot with different stations that all of the prom experience that they would get coming on our campus, whether it was inside, well, they're going to get outside. They're still going to be able to drive the red carpet. They're still going to be crowned the king and the queen of prom. But if you have not volunteered to serve at that event, would you go to NF, as in Northfield, nfnighttoshine.com. You'll find a button at the top of that that you can click to serve or to volunteer there and you can be a part of it because here's what we would love to see. We would love to see this parking lot packed. I'm talking packed, packed, packed with you cheering them on because when you cheer them on, it's not just you cheering them on, but that is God's love that is cheering them along with you. And so if you haven't, man, what an incredible opportunity to stand in. And, and just as I watched yesterday, I just was, I wasn't convicted, but it would just affirm this truth that if we can in large numbers watch the Titans lose another playoff game, then by all means, why could we not pack this parking lot for that group of people? Why could we not pack this parking lot for a group of people that deserves that love of God? And so you, you knew the Titans joke was coming at some point, but I hope it does just remind you of like, man, I, I can use my, what I have and I can use my lever and leverage that for so much more uh, in this world. And so if you haven't volunteered to serve at Night to Shine, please, please, please consider doing that. We also have another opportunity for you if you want to serve at Night to Shine. We asked all of our honored guests as they registered if they would like to participate in a prayer program for that. They had the option, they could opt in, opt out, and like a bunch of them, most, most of them opted in and said, yeah, we would love to be a part of that. And so if you want to have just a personal touch on this event, if you make your way towards our kids' hallway, those of you that are here, you'll see there's a table that's set up. You probably already saw it when you checked in your kids, but there's a little wallet size picture frame of one of our honored guests. And you can take that, you can put it on the refrigerator, you can put it in your car, somewhere that you're going to see it. But just to know that every Every day I'm committing that I'm going to pray for this honored guest. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray for them by name, by specific needs that they have right here and right now. And is doing that when our care package um, or our, our caregiver packets are ready and available to send out, you'll actually have the first right to send and to deliver that. So again, you can make that personal touch to that family and to that uh, honored guest that you've been praying for. And so if you want to grab one of those, be sure to see our prayer team right the, towards that kid's hallway area. You'll see a table in there, but I hope that you will join us in this effort as we continue to serve our friends and families with special needs. Now, as we mentioned earlier, next week, we're going to be diving in to a brand new series that we're calling The Blessed Life. And in this, we're going to be doing a deep dive of the Beatitudes or what's famously become known as the Beatitudes. It's these words from Jesus where he gives this really an ideal of what life could look like in the kingdom. That as we uh, seek to follow him and, and intentionally pursue what he would have for us, well, Jesus, he begins to outline uh, just a number of statements that 
that, that on the surface, they seem a little bit difficult. They seem tough at times. But in this, we realize that this idealistic lifestyle that Jesus is pursuing or having us come towards, well, what it does is it actually draws us deeper and deeper into him. And what we experience is more and more of what life in God's kingdom looks like. And so I just want to read that list to you. And then I want to jump in this morning. But Jesus, as he dives in, he makes statements like this. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Man, you ever felt poor in spirit? Well, good news, because yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Man, have you ever mourned? (laughs) Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you or persecute you or falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who are before you. And these words of Jesus, well, they hold a little more weight than just words we read on a page. These words of Jesus, they, they possess really what it takes as we pursue intentionally what God would have for us. These words, they hold with them the values and the feelings that come with faithfully following Jesus day in and day out. And what I love is that as we look at these words and we create an idealistic lifestyle to pursue and to follow after, there's been in this ministry of Celebrate Recovery, the the leadership of Celebrate Recovery globally has taken these principles of the Beatitudes and they've actually worked them to be the guiding principles for the recovery process. And as we'll see, and as we're going to kind of dive in, you'll, you'll see and be able to make the connection between each of these steps that happens in the recovery process through Celebrate Recovery. But, but this morning, what I would love to do is, is I want to tell you uh, really, really just three reasons why I'm thankful that we partner with Celebrate Recovery and why I'm thankful that we've launched that right here at Northfield. Because again, like Night to Shine, it's been an endeavor that, that, that we didn't really know what would come of it. But we just said, this is where God is leading us and we want to explore this and through an incredible leadership team and launch team. And so many of you that have gotten involved and been a part of Celebrate Recovery, you've seen the, the life change that comes from this ministry. You have seen it firsthand in what you've experienced. And some of you, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you thank you for the ways that you have given your time, your talents, your abilities to make Celebrate Recovery happen and to make it a reality right here in our county, but also in our church family as well. And so again, I want to give you just three reasons why I'm thankful for Celebrate Recovery here at Northfield. The first is this, is that it's based on God's word, that it is based on the word of God. Rick Warren, it kind of tongue in cheek said of recovery, he said this, he said, there's two types of people in the world. There's those who need recovery and know it, and then there's those who need recovery and don't know it. And often, I'm just, just to be open and to be real with you today, often I, I have been guilty of, of downplaying and even dismissing at times my own brokenness, right? It's, it's just one of those that, yeah, I know I'm broken, you're broken, we're all broken, it's okay. And we just kind of downplay that to realize like, the way that we view brokenness is just that it's so nonchalant that it's just, yeah, everybody's got some brokenness to deal with and, but who, who's got the time to deal with it, whatever. And I've just, I've been guilty of that, but in looking and exploring more about what Celebrate Recovery does and this intentional Christian recovery program and looking going, wow, <laughs> wow, this isn't just for people who have maybe a chemical dependency like I thought, because as we see in the book of Romans, Paul, he outlines it this way. He says, for all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. Did you catch that? For, what's that word? Oh, one more time, for. Mm, That hurts, doesn't it? Because all includes you. Uh, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but it's not just left on your own there. It's not just left to your own devices. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And you realize, man, maybe this like recovery thing isn't for the people, the group that I thought it was. Maybe this is for me as well, because I am also in need of recovery due to my sin. But thankfully I have a God who loves me, loves me so much that he was willing to send the solution to the need that I had. And as we look and look at the, the, the recovery process through Celebrate Recovery, you'll see that it's filled with the word of God. Because the first line of the Beatitudes, Jesus says this, he says, blessed 
or the poor in spirit. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? It's not about monetary. To be poor in spirit is this feeling of distance from my heavenly father that in these longings that I have for the things of the eternal, these longings that I have to be loved and to be close and to be accepted by my heavenly father, there's a distance that gets put between us due to our sin and, and, and done long enough, that distance, well, it will create this very poor in spirit type of life that Jesus talks about. But he says this, that blessed are the poor in spirit. Why? Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven, because it's in that moment that you'll see, that when you lean into it, you'll see that you have a God that that is willing to work with you and desires to work with you and actually longs to be close to you. And it directly coincides with the first guiding principle of recovery, and it says this. It says that I realize I'm not God. How's that hit you? (laughs) Did you forget that? Because I have a tendency, again, I have a tendency to walk out of this place and to forget that detail that I'm not God that I am not the one that gets to manipulate and dictate outcomes. Anybody else struggle with that? I realize that I am not God and I admit that I'm powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. Again, how does that hit you? Because often I think, well, I can, I can dictate outcomes. I can manipulate things to go the way that I think they should go, but that's not my role. That's not my job. It's not my place in this world. And so realizing, man, the first part of the recovery process, but then the first part of really me faithfully following God and and honoring him in what I do day in and day out, well, it comes from acknowledging and realizing that I am not God and that I admit that I have a tendency to do the wrong things due to my own sinful nature, but I have a God that loves me so. And so if you ever thought that recovery was for someone else or you've got that family member that you know that you know, they, they really need to check out Celebrate Recovery. I think that from Paul's reminder here, it's more of a, a personal touch for you to ask, man, man, wow, wow, where have I been overstepping the boundaries of what God would have for my life? That's just the first reason. The second reason that I'm thankful for our partnership with Celebrate Recovery is this, is that Celebrate Recovery is rooted in community. Celebrate Recovery is rooted in community. As you see, if you've been around Northfield for long enough, you will have hear, you would have heard, you would have heard one of our core values here is that rescue people do life together. Rescue people do life together. Say it with me. Rescue people do life, do life together. See, and, and I'm guilty of this too. When I hear do life together, I think of the fun stuff. I think like, oh yeah, our life group, we're going to go bowling. That sounds awesome. Like I'm like, I love bowling. That would be great. And, and so we think about, oh yeah, we do life together. We eat dinner together. We do all the fun things together, but You don't have to look very far in your life, do you? You don't have to look very hard, you don't have to look very far to see, you know what, life's tough sometimes, isn't it? And as you heard our friend Tammy, she said in our video that we had during communion, I don't have to look very far to see some hurts and habits and hangups. Yes, in other people's life, it's really easy to look at the mess that is someone else's life, but when I get serious and I get real about looking at my own life, man, I've got some hurts. I've got some habits, I've got some hangups and things that I've dealt with in my life that, that maybe I've never addressed, maybe I've never explored, but and I don't have to look far to realize that I have some of these hurts and habits and hangups as well. And so Celebrate Recovery, what it does is, man, it, it coincides right with this, this value that we have placed so heavily here at Northfield of rescued people doing life together. Well, that means every part of life. That means the good, bad, the ugly, and everything in between. That that's what we do together. Because in this, James, even the half-brother of Jesus, he emphasized the work of community in this way. This is in James 5, 16. He says, therefore, therefore confess your faults to each other and pray for each other so that you may be what? So that you may be healed. And I'm going to tell you something that's really simple, but, but I think we have a tendency to miss this at times. It says, therefore confess your faults to who? Each to each other. And to pray for who? Pray for each so that you may be healed. Now, here's the detail that I don't want you to miss, okay? You can't each other by yourself. Did you know that? You can't each other by yourself. Because at that point, we're not doing anything with anybody else. And so James, he tells us that if you want to really explore what healing looks like, yes, there's forgiveness that comes from the side of God. However, as we look at healing, well, healing, healing comes in the form of community. Healing comes in the form of of shining light on places that maybe you don't want to shine light on in your life. However, as we get this just reminder, 
that as you confess your faults and to pray for each other, that that is where this healing process continues in our life. And so that's what I love even about Celebrate Recovery is that every aspect of Celebrate Recovery happens through the context of community. Whether it's step studies, whether it's the, 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 the large group worship gathering, any aspect of Celebrate Recovery, just like within our church family, well, it features a, an, an, or an aspect of community. Now in this, as I said, we're diving into a brand new series, This Blessed Life, but it's so much more than just a Sunday morning series that we're about to dive into because this Blessed Life series is gonna operate like a spiritual growth campaign has in the past here at Northfield. And so today, those of you that are here on campus, there's something going on that we call Group Connect, that if you've been maybe asking, wondering, I would like to get involved in a group, but I don't know where to start, or I don't know, are there any groups that even have an opening for me? Are there people that even want me to be in their group? The answer to all of that is yes, absolutely, there is. And so today, if you go right out these doors in that green room space right there, you'll just see a row of tables and it is filled with group leaders who have openings in their group that want you in their group. And so today you have that opportunity that as we dive into this messaging series that we're going into, there's gonna be Sunday morning content that will bless your life, but there will be content for your life groups that will allow you to go deeper and to really explore these aspects of community that will allow you to experience that core value that we have here, that we do life together, good, bad, ugly, all the fun, all the crazy. We do it all together because all of that encompasses what life looks like. So if you're looking to connect to a group, maybe today is the day that you take that step. And so you can go see Ryan out there at the I'm in station or go meet one of those group leaders there today. Now, let me give you the third and final reason. Well, it's not the final reason, but the one that we have time for today. But the third reason that I love and I value Celebrate Recovery here at Northfield is this, is that Celebrate Recovery offers a front row seat to life change. Celebrate Recovery offers a front row seat to life change. And you probably noticed in that video, there may have been somebody that you recognize or maybe somebody that you didn't. It's somebody that's aptly known as Trent's dad in here. Is that right? No, just kidding. Uh, my dad, just to catch you all up to speed, my dad always pokes fun because he says, I have a name. I have a name. It's just unfortunate that you get known as Trent's dad, Trent's dad, Trent's dad. But this is Kip. This is my dad. This is part of uh, our Celebrate Recovery team. But, but what many of you may not know, just knowing us in the context of the last few years is that... <laughs> Pops, we, we've had a rough go at times, uh, haven't we? That there's been some, there's been good moments that we've had and there's been some rough patches in this. But as I look at what Celebrate Recovery means to me, as somebody that has not been directly involved with the recovery process, but somebody that has been directly involved with someone who is directly involved with the recovery process, I can speak this with good authority that I have had a front row seat to watching my dad transform into somebody that I didn't think he would be. That I've had a front row seat to a 12 year journey of his recovery process. And through that, I've been able to see and to experience a life with him that I didn't think was possible. <laughs> because for the first 18 or so years of my life with my dad, I love my dad because he was my dad. But there were days and there were moments that I didn't like my dad. I didn't like the life that I lived. I didn't like the experience that I had. But over the course of time, because as you know, the consequences and the pains that come from hurt, they don't just disappear over time, but over the course and the process of his faithful recovery journey, what it has done is it has mended more than just his life. That what it has done and what it has been a part of for me is it has given me a confidence, it has given me an assurance that I have a best friend in my dad that I didn't have before. And so when I tell you and when I say the reason that I value Celebrate Recovery is for the people that, that are involved in this ministry and these people that take these steps of faith in their life and these funds, man, what I love about Celebrate Recovery is the stories that you don't even see that are represented in their story. It is the stories of restored relationships, the stories of that looked totally broken, shattered into so many pieces that you'll never be able to collect them and find them. But what Celebrate Recovery does is it gives you a front row seat to watch the transforming power of Jesus firsthand. That's why I love that we partner with Celebrate Recovery. That's why I love that we launched that. And that's why I love that our community maybe for the very first time, 
gets the confidence to darken the doors of a church, a church that they thought didn't have any need for them or a church that thought they had no value or they had no place in being in a church. But what Celebrate Recovery might do is it might give somebody that opportunity, or that window to peek through at what life on the other side might look like. And they have an, a, a safe space to come in and to walk in a journey that they may have thought they could have walked before, but man, the story of hope and the story of redemption that can come from that first step of celebrate recovery. Guys, I'm living proof of the way that it can over time make a positive impact in ways that you might not have thought were possible. So I don't know what your next step is today, but what I hope is that you plan on right now, you pre-decide, you just put it on the calendar, you put it in your mind right now, that next Sunday I'm gonna be here as we dive in to this blessed life series, as we look at what God would have for each of us to, what it, to experience what it looks like to live and to operate and to function within his kingdom, that we can just get a glimpse or we can just get a taste of what faithful following of Jesus may look like. I hope, I hope, I hope that we get to see you again next week. Let me pray for you guys and then we'll wrap up. Father, I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful that we have an opportunity to declare what you're doing in and through our lives. And just as we declared this morning already, that we are free, that we have been set free from the things that hold us back, whether it is our sin, whether it is our anxiety, whether it is our fears, whether it is our chemical dependencies, whatever we wanna fill in the blank with that holds us back and that keeps us captive, God, there is nothing, nothing that can stand in the way of your mighty power. And so we are thankful for that. And we are thankful that we get to experience it firsthand. And I'm thankful for the people in this room right now that are gonna make a decision to say, I wanna pursue that life because that is the God that loves me and sees me and values me because that's the way that you see all of us. And God, I'm thankful for the stories of hope and the stories of restoration and the story of what you are doing so that it is your name that is made known among us. God, we've seen it before and let us see it again, time and time again. God, we love you and we all declare together, amen. Amen, thanks Trent. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I hope you've had a great day. We just have a couple things for you as you get ready to go. And the first of those is if you're wanting to pray for one of our honored guests that's coming tonight to shine, we're going to have those magnets and stuff right outside here heading towards the bridge. You can pick up one of those on the way. And the next thing that I want to talk about is right outside these doors, we're having group connect. If you're not in a group, get connected today. I promise you, you will not regret it. That's going to be outside the door. And hey, if you're wondering about CR, if we have a t-shirt on or a lanyard you can find us right outside these doors we would love to talk to you a little bit about what recovery looks like guys thank you so much for being here hope you have a great week